Wednesday evening, June 18th. The Board of Education meeting is called, or the work session called in order. The Board of Education is compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975 entitled the Open Public Meetings Act. The time, date, and location of this meeting was appropriately advertised by notifying the retrospect, as well as posting notices in the Borough Hall, Remedy Post Office, and every whole school, the Elaine Bingham School, Grace Downing School, and the Remedy Public School District website. We will do the Pledge of Allegiance at our regular session or regular meeting. Uh, roll call vote, please. Ms. Adair? Here. Ms. Beebe? Here. Mr. Buffon? Here. Ms. Davidson? Here. Ms. Barry? Ms. Panzarello? Ms. Smith? Here. Ms. Torello? Here. Ms. Baldy? Quorum. Also present for the workshop session is our superintendent, Mr. Uh, Nucci. School Business Administrator, Board Secretary, Dr. McCarran. Uh, business Consultant is not here at this time. Principal from Bingham, Missyazi, uh, Mr. Peely. Principal Volts. Okay. Ms. Hines, Child Study Team is here, and Mr. Bruner, Supervisor. Ms. Hines is not here. I think that I can let you say that. Okay. She'll be here. Not yet. <laughs> Okay, um, this evening, Mr. Garrison um, is here, Garrison Architects, to discuss the project, um, pre project presentation. Uh, we pushed this meeting back, so we thank him for rescheduling coming out and wearing a suit jacket. It's 90 degrees in the outside. <laughs> so thank you for coming. Um, I don't have anything else, so I'm going to let you take it away. If you have any questions during the presentation, I'm sure Mr. Garrison. Um, just so you know, we have been approved for the three ROD grants that dealt with health and safety, which is what he'll be going over today. We will not be doing anything with those ROD grants at this time during the 14-15 school year because we need we want to make sure that we have our local share to meet the grant amount that we need. So we do have 18 months from the time the grant is issued to actually act on the grant, which means what he's discussing today will be taking place. At, um, after July 1st, 2015. So it would be next year at this time is when we'd be going into working out on the Rock Grants that way, okay? Great, thank you, Tom. Okay, and it, it, it's good to meet uh, many of you. I know we've met over the years in committee and, and I guess, you know, I always start this presentation by being thankful, thankful that the district had hired me back in 2010 and thankful that we started a process of identifying projects within the district. Um, so tonight's presentation uh, with the moving uh, pictures, um, which I'll have to look into, is uh, really, what is it, uh, why were we ready? And I talked about the fact that we had established a long range facility plan in 2010. Why was that important? What was the New Jersey uh, funding mechanism uh, that we're gonna talk about tonight? What is the timing associated with that? What projects did we apply for at each of the schools? That would be Bingham and Downing Elementary Schools, as well as projects here at Mary Bolt School. And what are the approved projects and the cost analysis and a kind of time schedule for the completion of those projects? It all starts with the Corzine administration uh, passing legislation in 2008, uh, July, 2008 provided $3.9 billion worth of funding. And the $3.9 billion worth of funding was really a result of previous legislation, which was the first landmark legislation called the Educational Facility Construction Financing Act. In 2000, it was $8.6 billion. That money got used up in an accelerated process from zero, zero to zero, five. Burned right through it in five years. So when state government talked about reappropriating talking to Corzine about putting another $3.9 billion up, the disbursement of the money was going to be in different rounds. And so when I talk about rounds of funding. So it was important when the application period opened up for the fourth round, because with the legislation in 08, we had rounds in 9 and 10. Two rounds in 9 and one in 10. Christie came into office after 10 and suspended the program. So we didn't have any rod grants available to us. That's why we were doing the planning behind the scenes with the long range facility plan. And so what happened statewide 
was quite remarkable to me because the application period opened on June 3rd, June 3rd, 2013, and lasted through basically Labor Day. So in the dead of summer, state government opens up a program to accept applications for matching school facility funding when my boards of education don't even meet regularly during those months. Thank God you did, and you were in a position to pull the trigger on some project. Well, statewide, much to my surprise, there's 2,100 applications that were submitted. There were 1,538 approved. Yeah, that means 600 people got turned away at the door up there because their projects weren't eligible. They didn't match what the state criteria was. 331 districts received $507 million. Running the school district and the taxpayers of this community garnished a state share of $1.8 million. That's the number that you see in green. So we've got almost $2 million in matching school facility money, money that the taxpayers here paid into, and we were able to go and return it back to them. The project application was quite clear. These were going to be level one projects. They were going to replace essential building systems. What's that? That's our mechanical, electrical, plumbing, or fire protection systems. Another priority, the second priority, was building skins. Roofing, windows, and doors. Sounds very familiar to the needs that we have here in these facilities. Building code issues, interior doors, ADA compliance, hazardous material, security and communications, and then we drop down to playgrounds uh, and additional classroom space. So the projects, when we started thinking about the type of projects that we wanted to put into the application, we knew that they had to match up with level one. So we went fishing a little bit, and I'll explain that in a minute. But at Bingham Elementary School, our long-range facility plan told us that we've got masonry restoration to do. We need to repoint the brick and do some ceiling on the outside of our building in various areas. We need new exterior doors and hardware. This is not only an aesthetic issue, but obviously a safety issue for our students and our staff. Replace the existing vinyl windows with new aluminum windows, blinds in the glass, low E coating. It's a more durable solution instead of the vinyl product that exists. Protective window guards, that's a natural because we've got the play areas in the back of the school that are paved. In concert with the window replacement, we've got to take care of the steel window lintels. These are the items that support the brick over top of the windows. What happens is the water runs down, weeps through the brick, and lands on those lintels and over time they rust. So we're going to replace that as part of the project. So our subtotal is almost $600,000 here at Dingham Elementary School. And then we've got additional soft costs and fees that are on top of that. And they are architect engineering fees, construction contingency. What happens when you open that outside wall and we find something or avoid the brick or whatever? We have a 10% contingency for unforeseen conditions. We may even have a clerk of the works or a construction management firm uh, look over the construction process. We've got legal bonding, et cetera, et cetera, if we go that route. So the total cost here is 738, 750. So what state government does is state government takes the architect's estimate. So it's all the bricks and mortars, the labor and the materials to do the job, plus the soft cost, and this district A is 55.88 cents on the dollar. So the local share for this project is 325. It's like going to the checkout lane and somebody's already paid almost 56% of your bill when you go to checkout. Really, really a great opportunity to get projects done. At Grace Downey School, same thing. Masonry restoration, brick pointing, uh, exterior doors and hardware, replacing vinyl windows with aluminum windows, and then here we also have uh, some repairs to the lentils as well. So we've got 360 here. I mentioned in my opening remark that we went fishing. And we went fishing because one of the things that we wanted to do here at Downing was to convert a portion of the boiler room into a new food prep area. Okay, it's been a long-standing project that's been out there. Well, if you go back to the first slide, I had some yellow items that were cut by state government because they got so many applications. They unfortunately cut this out of our program. So we weren't able to get the matching state funding for this prep area. And that's the note that you see here. So here at Great Downing, we've got a $360,000 project. 201 comes from state government, leaves 158.8 is the local share. And 
this is the area that we were talking about. The double doors here, the new warm-up kitchen, refrigerator, countertop, you know, swing and door. So this is a solution that's out there. Uh, we've got uh, state approval for the layout. We just don't have the money right now to pull the trigger. Mary Volk School, this building, uh, a lot more work. We start with masonry restoration. We have exterior doors and hardwares in our original building because we know we've got the, the 95 wing and 95 dish in the back. Paint the exterior steel doors in the 95 wing because they still have some useful life. Replace the existing vinyl windows with aluminum windows in the original building, which is the front section here. Replace the existing vinyl windows in the 1995 edition with new aluminum windows, blinds in the glass. Clean and paint the existing steel windows and lintels. Original section roof replacement. Large item, 46,000 square feet of roofing. On the 1995 section, we're going to provide a put a coating on so that we extend the life of that roofing system. So that we don't come back to the taxpayers and say, well, we didn't do anything with that one roof because we still had some life left in the warranty, so I'm sorry we've got to ask you for you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. No, we're going to take care of that now so that facilities-wise you'll have one roofing warranty, one person to call when you have a situation. Metal roof area, uh, snow guards so the snow doesn't slip when our visitors coming in, and the back area, gym roof ladder, uh, that'll allow transitions to and from the spaces <coughs> on the high wall. Subtotal is a million eight. The soft costs, which are eligible at 55 cents, gives us $2.2 million. Again, we went fishing. Convert the existing home economics, D4, into a new production kitchen, uh, renovation of that room, conversion, and new kitchen equipment. Well, we didn't get that, unfortunately, as well in the Rod Grant. We just didn't have enough money. So $2.2 million, 55% state aid gives us a million in local share. And this is that particular room coming off the hallway. We take out all the existing cabinetry, et cetera, here. We've got our, our boxes over in this area uh, and you know, drive through storage over in this area. So this really, the plan's in place. We've given a lot of thought. Um, we have the, the pricing for it. So it's just a matter of someday of raising the funding and, and taking care of uh, converting that space and doing a new production kitchen. We go to the cost summary. Uh, we take Bingham, Downing, and Mary Volts, and it's $3.3 million worth of projects, almost 3.4 is the total. State government has pledged 55.8% for $1.8 million, almost $1.9 million. So the Board of Education has to raise $1.4 million as the local share. Uh, the timeline. And a lot of people wondered, well, why didn't you pull the trigger on it this summer? Why didn't you do something now? What's the hold up? Well, as I mentioned, these are the actual dates or the required dates over here. Our building pro uh, program, cost estimates and schematics and applications went in on August 27th before the deadline. We didn't need to revise the long range facility plan that we submitted because these projects were already there. The Department of Education issued a PEC offer on one of our schools on December 4th, but they didn't get the other letter out until January 21, after they asked us questions about our cafeteria additions and how much they were gonna cost so they could later cut them from our application. <laughs> Final eligible cost letters came out on January 21st and February 21st. Uh, the grant offers, yeah, they were supposed to come out uh, March and April, it was really late April. Um, we were looking, you know, the district was going to approve their new budget in this whole scenario. But here's really the key. The, 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 the grant agreements, the execution falls into the summer. And, you know, I was just visiting with my board member of Black Horse Pike, it's the same situation. There, we're waiting for these documents to come out. The roofing project, the Triton's being held up, the windows can't go in the island, we got contractors screaming. It's a terrible, terrible situation to have to wait. And the key is, State government didn't approve the money until the new year. I can't just turn on a switch, prepare documents, have a bid process, and have people order materials and labor and get ready to go in the middle of June. It just doesn't happen that way. So I guess by default, in your, uh, your planning of raising money in the future is going to work in our favor because we're going to have some time to develop the plans and specifications. We'll have a lot of hungry contractors. There wasn't a lot of work done this summer, and we'll proceed in an orderly fashion. 
The idea is to get the plants ready to go, get it better secure, get the grant signed up, and then proceed with construction. So that's really where we are in the, in the process. And, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm excited to, that you got almost $1.9 million in state aid. Thank you very much. Um, when we met with Bob earlier in the year, Earl, Mark, and myself, um, the, the big issue, as he said, was timing of everything. A big portion of what we're doing is replacing the roof, and that has to be done during summer months. We can't do that. Um, pieces here and pieces there. So in terms of the timing, getting the contractor and everything, having everything there, we just felt a little bit more confident in the fact that we'd be ready during um, next year at this time to really make those changes and be fully prepared. So with the window replacements and the roof, we'll be, we'll be in a much better spot then. And we'll do it all in an organized fashion. We're not gonna do one project over another because although it's windows on the exterior, you've got job site conditions, lay down areas, we don't want people tripping over each other. So we can organize it and plan it effectively so that everybody's on the same page. I think you saw some of the slides, the last slide there, some of the work will begin in March of next year. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the beauty, and that's a great point. The beauty of that is contractors are hungry. Not everybody can work all in 10 weeks of the year. We just can't do it all in New Jersey. So anything that we can do to give a contractor an opportunity to safely work in our buildings, separate from our students and our staff. And here, the second shift, what do we mean by second shift? Well, the materials are in pods on the site. So the custodial staff takes the classrooms, moves the furniture away from the window, the contractor comes in at three o'clock, we put up some protection devices, we pull the window out in one, one night, we have the new windows in a trailer. We do the installation, we caulk it, takes the barrier down, pushes the furniture back, or waits till the staff comes in the morning, cleans the floor, pushes the furniture back, and we, we hold plants. So we do one unit at a time in a very orderly fashion. So that was the idea. And it's attractive because it's work not in the 10 weeks of the summer. It gets them working at different times when they need the revenue stream. And how big are these storage pods? Uh, these storage? You know, like a pod, like the white the pod that you see, the right. storage trail. My biggest mm -hmm. concern yeah, is the work going on at Downing as well, window work at Downing. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. my biggest concern is where will those pods go with the limited space at Downing? Right. right. So in the instructions that we give them uh -huh. for the project scope or whatever, we can give them a designated lay down area <clears> so we can tell them where the unit's going to go. We won't leave it to chance if that's a concern. And any other concerns that you have. If you know that your principles, that we can work in this room, then let's publish that schedule as well. The work sequence is followed. We're going to do 103, we're going to do 205, we're going to do, you can dictate those instructions, and then the contractor will know that when they get their pricing. Thank you. 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 Thank Sorry we can't build a huge kitchen up front. <laughs> That's for a different day and time. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Bullying has to present for the district 
what our results were for the year and where we are, so that way the Board of Education is aware. And then at this point, what we will do is we will then submit this to the state with what we'll be doing moving forward. So this is actually what you get in your board packet each month, where it outlines student number, grade level, building, and what the classification it fell under was. So currently there's four different classifications. Bullying did occur, bullying did not occur, bullying did not occur, and disciplinary action was taken because it was a violation of the code of conduct and then also insufficient evidence. So what I did was I pretty much took what we had for this year and I broke down by building where we fell with each one. In both, there were a total of 10 HIV cases that were classified as occurring. Um, just to remind you, any situation of harassment, intimidation, and bullying could be one single instance. Um, when I was a building level administrator, one thing I would find is that many times it would take place even between friends or people who got along with each other through misunderstandings, but depending on what was said or how it was said, it might be fall under that category as well. So it just has to be one instance. It might have never happened before. It might not be something that's persistent, but if it happens once, it can still be classified. Um, in Bowles, there was three instances where bullying did not occur, but a student violated the code of conduct. And there were two cases where there was insufficient evidence to add up to an HIV case overall. One thing that I think is interesting is that where states bullying did not occur, many times when you see that classified, you can see that's only classified in the elementary schools. And a lot of times that's where there's a peer-to-peer -peer conflict, where they might use the term bullying, but they're not using it appropriately. Or if someone's not sharing with them at that one point in time, they're saying, he's being mean to me, he's bullying me. And one thing I stress to Mrs. Beta and Ms. Callahan this year also, and those are our two school specialists who investigate the HIV cases with the assistance of the administration, was the fact that we need to make sure that we're reporting everything that's given to us and that we're doing a full investigation each time that that happens. So it's interesting that bullying did not occur was in Bingham and Downey is where you see those two specifically. Whereas as you get older, the students have a better understanding of what bullying is, what picking on students is. So in both, there were a total of 15 incidents reported. In Bingham, there were three, and in Downing, there were three. In one case in Bingham, it did not occur, two cases with insufficient evidence. And in Downing, two cases where it did not occur, and one case where it did not occur, but the student violated code of conduct. Um, the district is obligated to investigate all reports. All documented reports involve students within one grade level of one another. I thought that was important to report to you since Volts does have grades four through eight. So when we look and we're reporting cases of HIV, I wanted to make sure it was very clear that it did not happen or take place between a fourth and a sixth grader or a fourth and an eighth grader. It happened most times within the same grade level or walking to school where it might be a kindergarten student and a first grade student or within different families um, walking together. Um, this year, students received an assembly, classroom lessons on bullying. All schools also implemented various character education programs, which will be continuing next year. Um, the staff members were involved in professional development, and they participated in all student activities related to bullying, peer-to-peer um, -peer relations, and those types of activities. Parents were provided with information regarding bullying and signs to look for. We had parental programming that was offered and we offered that during the daytime and also the evening. That was some of the parent programs that we held during the school year that you approved, um, which we will continue for next year. Next year, we will continue with those program, that programming for students, staff, and families. Um, one group that I am bringing in on October 17th of next year is the South Jersey Youth Alliance, and they go into many districts throughout South Jersey. They bring in presenters. Um, one of the presenters they will be bringing in next year for us is Seth Franco. He's a former Harlem Globetrotter. And what's nice about the program is that they will do three school assemblies within one day. They will do a parent event that evening where families will come out for an event. Um, and a performance will be done. And then, of course, they drive it home with the message of how we treat each other, what to look for with bullying, how to help your students. And also, staff professional development will continue to be provided during the 14-15 school year to 
what to look for, how to address certain situations, and what needs to be reported and what doesn't need to be reported. Because in many cases, in the classroom, in the hallways, in the cafeteria, we can bring a situation down instead of escalating a little bit more and taking the preventative measures so it doesn't reach a certain point. And that's really what we're looking to do. Any questions? No, I have a question. Yes. Out of these uh, 10 total bullying occurrences, were any of these reoccurring students, students that bullied multiple times, or was they, or were these like 10 separate ins? The only thing, there was no, what I found was it was not double occurrences with okay. the same individual students. Okay. Did we have one student who had multiple times, but with different um, right. different people each time? There were certain cases in that, at which point Ms. Callahan and Ms. Beta mm -hmm. would be working with that student a little okay. bit more to you know provide strategies and different ways of dealing with situations in a positive manner. Okay. That's, that's a good thing to know. And also, um, can you give me some examples of the difference between a violated code of conduct versus a bullying instance? A bullying instance, okay, so many times it might be classified as, it, it's work to use a bullying instance. And what will happen is you then have to investigate, which right. means you speak to the person, you find out everyone who's involved. When you speak to the people and everyone who's involved, what you might find out is the fact that what they did wasn't appropriate, but guess what? This has been going on between the two students all year long. So. You and Mr. Buckheim have been arguing all year long. But then you walk in on Monday and you say, I'm done, I'm not going to be involved anymore. Mr. Buckheim doesn't know this, so he goes right back at you and says something to you. You walk up to the principal, Ms. Davidson, and you say, he's bullying me. She investigates, but Mr. Buckheim's like, what? She said this to me, she did this to me, she shut me, she shut me down on Sunday. So in that situation, what he did was inappropriate and might be against code of conduct now that it's reported, but at the same time, it wouldn't be bullying because it isn't the isolated situation where he has power over. Okay. And many times that's a difficult concept for students to understand. Is like the fact you're that stealing lunch money or you're... Right. So, right. Sometimes you develop a situation that you need, you need to own what you've developed and try to move away from it. You can't just say, with no one else involved, okay, well, I'm going to do good, I'm going to do well today. That's great, but how are you communicating that to, to your peers who you've now developed this relationship with? Okay, thanks. Mr. Buck, I would never bully anyone. Yeah, he bullies me all the time. All the time. <laughs> I've known that name for years. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Did you see uh, a reduction compared to the previous year's numbers? Is it about the same, less? When I looked at it, it was a little bit more than previous years. Um, coming in, this was my first year in the district. We had um, new administration as well. I worked very closely with Ms. Bain and Ms. Callahan, and I was very specific about what I was looking for with reports coming in. So I think now that we're able to see the reports that did come in, and we kind of know what we need to target and different grade levels that we need to target, I feel like we have a better idea to try to do a reduction in the next year. Um, and yes. sometimes I'll be honest with you, sometimes it's nice to see that kids are reporting things or right? anything. Okay. Okay. Kids are still working for themselves and not hiding yeah. it. Yeah. So it's always it's a, a double edged sword there. But I, I don't think the numbers were too far off. But it's nice to see that the kids that they are being mistreated are speaking up for themselves. But we're still not anywhere near. Now, do you have any instances where other students will? Bullying situation they may see between two others. Mm -hmm. Okay, that to me that's more important. Which has instances where parents have called up, yeah. even if it's not their own child, mm -hmm. but they know their child came home concerned about someone else. I mean, all those instances were investigated right. okay. to make sure that um, it's there, and that's where sometimes you'll see the insufficient evidence because it's not in. Right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Next uh, action we need to be taking right now is I need a motion on the floor to approve uh, the special session minutes of May 21st, the work session of May 21st.
No motion. No motion. Just, just question. Just F. All right. Any questions on any of those that you've had to take a look at? Oh, our sessions do last? Yeah, monthly mm -hmm. session. Special okay. session, work session, regular meeting, and executive session. From the Madness. presentations. How about all the reports? We'll start with the secretary's report. Just give the report time. districts, um, Rowan and Rutgers University in Camden, and what they do is they try to bridge the gap. And a lot of times they will go out for offers so that way they can find different vendors who can help. Another thing that they've done is also look for different financing opportunities, so um, ways to get bonds, whereas if we get them with a group and a conglomerate, we could get a better rate in terms of what we would be paying versus getting it on our own and having to go out for a referendum for that. So they were discussing that right now in terms of the financing component. They are looking for different programs to put together. So they do have you know, our information if anything becomes available. They'll be reaching out to me for that. Okay. Anything with the superintendent's report? Questions there? Working on the summer meet, it's scheduled for the three schools. I just had a request to Butch if he can do this meet, uh, only because I, I noticed it picking up my grandson at Downey. Uh, the second avenue, so the steps at the second avenue side of the playground, there's major soil erosion going down on the side of that step. I don't know whether we can problem solve that, but it's it's going to be a huge safety issue if it continues. Can you just check that? Okay. You're talking about the building and grounds report, not the superintendent, correct? No, this was under Mark's. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I'm doing it again. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm just looking to superintendent. That's all right. Anyone else with uh, questions on? Yeah. We'll stick with that, with the grounds, building grounds. Any? No questions. Whatsoever. Um, what, what no, I'm good, Mark. I lived there on the this month, Mark. So okay. Good. How about let's go back to the superintendent's report. <laughs> Any questions on the <laughs> superintendent's report? All right, child. That's enough. <laughs> I have one. Um, on the summer hours, which, it, which is very common, all school districts basically go to a four-day work week in the summer. Based on what I'm reading here, does that mean that the facilities are closed down on Fridays? No. Um, they're in a rotating um, schedule with the maintenance employees as well. I'm wondering if you do this because the maintenance works, um, they either work Monday through Thursday or Tuesday, or Tuesday through, Friday. through Friday. So on Fridays, when like, the office staff isn't there, they can knock it out detail, do some more cleaning. Yeah. What about the office? Like if someone with the, the office contact the, the office 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 is closed on Friday. Office is closed, yes. Okay. And we will be using um, the administrative assistance of Bingham and Downing to do the talk about earlier last year when we did uh, when we moved out from 10 to 12 month employees for the summertime. They will be coming over here on certain days to assist us with some district projects that we have going on. Uh, so there might be some days where they might not be available at this building as well. Okay. 
Anyone else have any questions? We would have that stuff posted on the website. All right, how about principal's reports? <laughs> Dr. Bingham and Dallas, anything there? I just have a really quick question. I've noticed this before, actually. Um, for the fire drills, it's taking about five to six minutes for the kids to get out, it looks like. Does anyone feel like it's like a, a long time to get out of school? Five to six minutes? Well, not in a building where there's stair mm -hmm. cases, stairwells. Right. 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 So is it because there's like not the so many doors to get out of those two schools that's taking so long, or it's a long time. So are you still using all three? Yeah, doors? we are. And I will say it's um, somewhat of a hope. I mean, with it being orderly, there is like a little bit of a waiting process. Like when I'm watching, like you have to, it's like, okay, let's wait till Ms. Majewski's class gets through. Um, I would say during the drills, it, it's orderly, but it is a little slower, probably just because of the way that the building is. And the age of the kids, you know, each yeah. step takes a little bit longer. I mean, I agree, though. I always look at both of them. Oh, my God, two, three, four. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I agree, but I think that's just the reality of it. They have no steps. And they have no steps. Right. Yeah, they have no steps. And 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 they have we account for all, you know, all students right. before re-entering. Right. But I, I do agree. It seems a little long, but at the time, it's just kind of like safe and orderly and we're accountable. Any other questions? Vault school, principal's report. Anything with the nurses' reports? Any questions there? The Lisa Graham's report? Well, we already dealt with that. <laughs> Way to go, babe. Special education report. Any questions there? Okay, let's move on then to property and transportation. As you read through the uh, items, the agenda items, and you have any questions. I have a question number one. Um, oh, okay. Yes, well, maybe. Uh, I'll talk about uh, St. Teresa's basketball team using the all purpose room. Are there specific nights of the week, or mm -hmm. is this every night that we're approving them to use the all purpose room? They, um, have, they have specific nights that they're going for, um, not to conflict with um, the RYA. So the RYA does Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. So might do Tuesday evenings. Okay. So see no conflicts with no, that? No, it's been similar now. It's good that we're getting this stuff completed tonight. Right. So sure. Very good. I just didn't have any problems so here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? I right, didn't want to follow. Okay, 
Personnel. Personnel, we have wow. items one through yes. 14. I have Ruby Jewel number three. Uh, is this a new service manager or was she the manager before? I, you just give me a little history here of what's going on with it. Because I know we shifted food services again. Yes. Ruby Jewel is our previous food service manager when she served with, was here. Okay. Um, so as of right now, what her responsibility would be would be making sure she'd be the middle person between us and Black Horse Pike Regional. She would be making sure menus are compliant with what's needed um, to go out each month, lunch tickets, making sure all the supplies are in place, and working with our cafeteria staff. Okay, so she's here every day? Yes. yes. Am I interested? We work with Black Horse Pike for the past right. year. Section is large, the finance section. 36 items there. Any questions at this time? Yes, I have questions to number two professional development workshops, the, the very first academy. Mm -hmm. What is the scope of this particular training session? Ms. Hans, would you like to give a little brief summary of Wilson training, which is taking place? It's the um, Wilson Reading Program which is a multi-sensory reading uh, program, which we have have had in the district. Uh -huh. It's a Wilson, um, it's an instructional program that we've had in the district that over the years, we have less and less teachers that are trained in the program to use it. So we have, it's a really great research data driven um, program. So we've brought in someone to, you have to go through Wilson and you have to have a Wilson trained person to do that training. So she's doing a three-day overview with our teachers so that they can use the materials and, and continue to teach the program. Because over the years, we've had um, some teachers that have left that had that training in the past. So at the end of it, they'll be able to do small group teaching of reading uh, using the Wilson Reading Program, which we have foundations and the Wilson okay. currently. Okay. I misunderstood when I looked at the preview, I thought it was only these two people. And it's general ed and special ed mixed. It's uh, teachers by discipline. Right. And I do want to give, public, you know, give credit to the teachers that are coming back um, tomorrow and Friday for this training. They're not being um, right. um, so come back on their own time, but so I do appreciate the fact that they're doing that. It is a great program. Thank you. Any other questions? We had 36 items there. All of you are listed on um, one of the last ones. <coughs> School Boards Convention in October. Uh, Mark, I have a question for numbers seven and nine. I guess. Well, I don't think the reason's on my preview. I'm making sure it's on the other side. Archway schools charging students reduced or paid meals. What is, is this the before and after school for everyone? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is just a resolution that we're not requiring them mm -hmm. to charge students. This Archway program <coughs> is for our special special ed student population with special needs. It states that it's a part of their educational program because feeding is <coughs> their IEPs. So the staff members at 
this is not just kids. This is the archway pro. It's an archway program where our students are sent. So this is allowing them to use breakfast and lunch, not charge them, because it's actually a part of their program and their education. Okay. Right. Right. So this is these are children out of district. You're saying. Correct. Okay. And then number nine, increase the payment for prep time for a student. Um. One of our students, we have to pay an hourly rate for their education because they are not um, receiving their education in Runnymede. As a part of that rate for the placement that they received, we have to pay an, a daily prep rate for the teacher to prepare lessons for the student that they're receiving. It's a part of the contract for the program that they're in. When we got the contract, we simply had you approve it for the, do um, the dollar amount for the hours of education. Um, however, it was further stated that a prep time needed to be included for the teacher at this rate for X number of days, which is where we came up with the not to exceed $800, depending on the length of placement for that student. So their hourly rate does not include your prep time, is what you're Correct. saying? Correct. Well, that's a new one. Well, that's so it's in their context. It's pretty it's, it's pretty standard. Even when we have it, like a teacher at the deaf uh -huh. that comes in, they charge us like point three three for travel time, prep time on every hour. Right, and but would they wouldn't that be part of their negotiated contract? That they're negotiating their travel time, their prep time, their hourly teaching time it's, with that particular student. Yeah, it's a um, it's a service that provides that tutoring for like um, an outside treatment facility, and it's what they charge that facility. We don't really have a choice. Not a and just it so is you know what that it, that's what they, that's we have to provide the tutoring at that facility, and that's who does it, and that's right. what they charge. Okay. And the hourly rate that we're getting charged is based on our hourly rate that we would pay our own teachers for home instruction. So it's not a set rate that they give, but we then have to pay that additional, as Lori was saying, okay. a point three three for each hour of instruction that they're given. Okay, any other questions before we move on to that? I just have one more, uh, number 20. Uh, as far as shared services through state agencies, um, I just, uh, what sh services do, again, do we share with Sterling High School? Sterling High School offers a number of shared services when it comes to HVAC. Um, it's a list of things that they have uh, um, as a shared service agreement. Many times it's, it doesn't hurt us to approve them but what it would allow us to do is if, let's say we had um, something burst in one of our buildings, uh -huh. they would be already approved for us to go to and they would already have the bids and the individuals we could go to to get those items fixed. So this is something above and beyond our maintenance crew can be Correct. Here. Yes, agree, much? You agree? It's rare, but it may have. Okay, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> if there are no further questions, let's move on to curriculum. Any concerns there? I just have one, number four, with um, Alyssa Juliana, who's going to start the fall year with Lori Seconder as of August 25th, when we're not in the building. That's when, that's when their course Yes. Oh, okay. So, so we're why. really not accountable for her until no. we actually begin. Okay. But she, she can come in to help set up the okay. classroom, things like that. Teachers can't come back without right. okay. Thank you. File sheets, public relations. Yes. Questions there? Okay. Number seven. Um, what are the
Last year we had the board retreat. I know a lot of people have to, they, they did take off work for the day, but I understand. I'll use any excuse to take off work for the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. How about the other one the press one?